The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Michael Kramer, and Michael is founder and CEO of Hype Cats Video Production, and he has a great message for nonprofits. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Senator, and thank you for having me on your program. Oh, I'm so glad I you're here. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. You have such important information for us, and I'm dying to hear it. And so you have been working with nonprofits for so long, really, really. And uh, I've been so impressed with your work. And now you've founded Hype Cats Video Production. So I'd love to hear all about that, and then I'm going to have some questions. Okay. Well, good. Well, first of all, you know me as uh, the website guy. We yes. Have, we have yes. about 450 local website clients, and we service about 80 nonprofits locally. And so you're right. This is an opportunity for us to bring another, another benefit to some of these nonprofits. And so we're talking today about hybrid events. And so the question then is, well, what is a hybrid event? Yes. And so a hybrid event is, uh, I guess they existed before COVID, but definitely after COVID. And I, and I think they're here to stay. So a hybrid event is where uh, an organization, a nonprofit or a for-profit has a regular event that occurs. It could be a meeting, it could be a, like an annual board meeting, it could be a fundraiser for a nonprofit, it could be a church service, something that regularly happens in person, except because of COVID, everyone had to make things virtual. And now when we're coming back into the real world, people are saying, well, wait a second, I kind of liked some of the convenience yeah. of that virtual. So how can we how can we still participate virtually if maybe we can't be there, or we we don't want to be there? We just want to participate virtually because maybe it's harder for us to get there. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening? I'm going to take churches as an example. Uh -huh. um, uh, I know that Unity of Santa Barbara they've always had great services, but because of COVID they went hybrid and now their membership is growing beyond the walls of Santa Barbara. So they've wow. got members of their, of their congregation, I don't know if all over the country, but definitely outside of Santa Barbara in the state of California. And they produce a fabulous service. And so I, I'm so excited. And so as a result of that, I, I watched their service and then I went to a couple of the other services from different churches and they weren't so engaging. Oh. So there's a, there's a secret to making a good hybrid event, and they've figured out that secret. So the possibilities are endless. Yes. I mean, really, think about that. Yeah. So how, they, like, what's part of the secret? Well, part of the secret sauce is preparation. So you want to give your virtual friends that are coming in a really good experience. And the experience that they need is they need good audio. They need to be able to clearly hear. If you're in a large room, whether you're over there or over there, they need to be able to hear those people clearly. The old adage in video production is, even if the video is blurry, as long as they can hear you, the guest will stay. Oh. If the video is terrible, if the, if the audio is terrible, oh. they'll leave. People check out. People check out right away. So you have to have good audio, and then you have to have good camera equipment too. So I know that when people are just getting started in this area, they're like, well, let's just put our little webcam or the laptop camera o over there, and then we'll shine it down into the room. <laughs> and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that well. So what's happening is the advent of cameras called PTZ cameras, mm -hmm. and that stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. Oh. And so those cameras are remote. They don't take uh, a person that has to be behind them, you know, moving the camera around. They're all done through computer. 
So we can, when we do our virtual productions, we can have three of these PTZ cameras in a room and one person can manage all the cameras and all the angles. And so you can actually zoom in on people when they're talking, zoom back if there's a, a, a discussion in the room, and it makes the experience a lot better than a small webcam on a laptop sitting in the corner that has low resolution. Well, and you know, during the, um, the time when, we had, when everyone had to have a virtual meeting or a Zoom meeting or whatever, I think, I don't know, I would venture to say most organizations like if they had their board meeting or whatever kind of meeting they had on Zoom, mm -hmm. it was kind of frustrating because nobody really knew how to, I mean, in theory they knew how to make it work, mm -hmm. but then there'd be people that couldn't quite figure out how to get in and then everybody has to wait for them and on and on and on. Lots of frustration. And so it sounds like you have figured it out so that it's smooth and enjoyable. Yeah. Well, the other part of a good hybrid meeting is not just what's happening in the room, but what can the virtual audience bring to the room. So one of the things that's kind of exploding is this idea of having a guest speaker, and the speaker isn't physically in the room. Oh. But let's say that I'm a church and there is a, 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 an authority somewhere on the other side of the country on a subject that we're discussing this week or yeah, this month yeah. in the church. We can bring them in virtually Right? This is a lot less expensive than flying someone out, putting them up for several days and feeding them and doing all of that. You can, they can just virtually come in. And uh, we've done many events like this. In fact, um, just a couple months ago, we did an event for a company in Boston and one of their guests was uh, Bing Gordon. And Bing Gordon uh, was on the board of Amazon. He's oh, the one that created the word Prime. So when you oh. say Amazon Prime, that's Bing Gordon. So wow. he's been in two of our programs, our virtual programs, as a presenter, right? It's wonderful that we can bring in all of this oh, talent yeah. to our locals. So, so for them, they want to be able to see people in the room, uh -huh. right? If someone stands up and talks, they want to be able to zoom in on that person and see them and feel like they have this face-to-face -face conversation. For the people in the room, they need to be able to clearly hear Bing. So oftentimes we'll set up speakers could be just like a little sound bar like uh -huh. you would have on a TV at home uh -huh. or if it's a larger room maybe amplifiers or something like that but then we need to tech check Bing which means that anyone that is presenting needs to have good lighting on themselves they need to have a good camera they need to have good audio because the worst thing to do is watch oh. someone that's in the dark or a bright light right. behind them and you can't really hear them that well so um, in the program that we just did for the University of Utah we tech checked uh, about 30 people that were presenting so that when they presented, they looked what we call amazing. We want everyone to look and sound amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to get my mind around this. So here you are in Santa Barbara. Yes. And let's say you have a client in Utah. Yes. So you can, of course, control all your camera and sound equipment and da 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 here mm -hmm. in Santa Barbara. but. Do you have to send somebody of your team there to oh. Utah to make sure they're, they have their act together? or how? To That's a good question. So what we do is we get the uh, specifications for the room and we draw a map of the room and where all of the cameras will be, where the seating will be, where any tables will be, where microphones will be. And then we put together that entire room out here and we test all the equipment and once everything is working, we put them all in boxes and we ship them out. You send them there? We send them out. Oh my gosh. Yes. So they, uh, all they do is they pay for the shipping. And then when they get there, whoever their computer guy is, he uh -huh. opens up the box and we're on the phone with them. He goes, he looks at the instructions. Okay, I'm going to put this piece of equipment here and this piece over here. And I need to run this cable there. It takes us about three hours to set the room up and then we're ready to go. That is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so... I'll tell you um, a real fun one we okay, just okay. did. Do you know Dr. Laura, the talk yeah, show host? Yeah, yeah. So uh, she's one of our recent clients, and we did a virtual, her first virtual Zoom show. And she is amazing. I, I have to tell you, she, she is a dynamo of a woman. And uh, she opened up registration on Zoom. Within 24 hours, 
she had a thousand people oh, and that golly. was the limit. So she said, no, up it, let's, let's, let's let some more people in. She says, let's cap it at 2000. Within another 24 hours, she had 2000 people signed up. <laughs> it was crazy. So we did her uh, first live Zoom event three weeks ago and it was just incredible. We were able to, behind her, display the people on Zoom and they were talking with her. Oh, wow. And at the end, they were dancing with her. <laughs> so it was like, it was really a true virtual event. She was there, they could, they could communicate with her, she could communicate with them. And it was all with, uh, I think virtual events are keeping costs down too, because if she would have had to go into a 2000 seat theater, then the cost and the preparation right. would have been, you know, five, 10 times as much as putting on a virtual event. Wow. Okay, so now, I'm imagining um, board meetings. Now, yes. you know, nowadays we can have face-to-face -face board meetings for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. But there, there are still some people, A, that are not comfortable with that, mm -hmm. and B, I don't know, maybe they're somewhere else and they, they're on vacation or whatever, they can't get to it but they wanna be part of the meeting, or whatever reason, they're, they're not able, able to be there. Mm -hmm. Maybe they live, over in the valley, or maybe they live down in Ventura, or, or somewhere like that. So uh, it sounds like this virtual meet, no, the hybrid, the hybrid, the right. hybrid meeting, would be the solution to that. And if if it's a solution, how would it work in a typical kind of board meeting with fifteen people? And um, yeah, how would a nonprofit pull that off? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a learning curve going on right now. Everyone's trying to figure this out. And I think that's one of the, uh, one of the values that we can bring people. If they, in their space, if they wanna figure out how to set up a virtual meeting, a hybrid meeting, so that they can have these uh, events occur, then uh, we can help them set it up. It's technical, but if all the technology is in place and you just have instructions that uh -huh. says, you know, turn that TV on, turn this microphone on, set it over here, people can do that. Uh, one of the things that we've done uh, in the last six or seven months is partner with Work Zones. Oh. And Work Zones is the hybrid or the co co working space uh -huh. at Paseo Nuevo in mm -hmm. downtown. And they have 15,000 square feet of space. I think they have about uh, 30 rooms. Mm -hmm. And they can accommodate anywhere from as few as four people in a hybrid meeting all the way up to 75 people. And so what we've done there is we've taken all the technical guesswork mm -hmm. out of having a hybrid meeting. So you can, you can go there, walk into the room, and everything is set up. So you've got uh, monitors set up so that you can see your, your guests in grid view. You've got monitors set up so that you can see your presenter view, whoever's talking, or if they have presentation materials like PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. All the microphones are set up so that all of your guests can clearly hear you uh -huh. and you can clearly hear them with the sound that's in the room. So the whole idea is that you just walk in the room if you want to. You can bring a laptop if you want to present something, but you don't have to bring anything. Mm -hmm. You can just bring the entire board of directors into the room and the other members that couldn't be there in person <clears throat> will be there. So the board members would come to work zones. Yes. As their meeting place in person. And the ones, the one down in Ventura, the one over in, in San Inez. The, so would you train somebody at the nonprofit on how to make that happen for those other people? Or well, if they, wanna, if they want to emulate this in their own environment, yes, they, they would need training. Just like we trained work zones on how to oh. set up the equipment and do it. So we're providing all the equipment and they, making sure that if there's any questions, that we're there to, to answer those questions or maintain the equipment. But for the most part, it's, the equipment doesn't need much maintenance. Right? Once you get it into place, it's just a matter of turning it on and knowing how to work it. Any kind of technology, you, you have to know how to work it. But the meetings are extremely effective. And, and I can tell you that uh, some of the hybrid meetings we've done at work zones uh, are people that normally would get together, but maybe they're traveling. Last week, there was a person that traveled to Hawaii. Well, he was able to attend the meeting from Hawaii. That's cool. All right, so here's this guy in Hawaii. What kind of equipment did he have to have, or what did he have to know in order to effectively join the meeting? Well, it was a private Zoom meeting, so he just had to have the Zoom link. Okay. And then, just like any Zoom experience, he just has to have a, a camera and a microphone oh. on the camera, so he could just have what he normally has. now. If he wants to 
if he was going to be a presenter, uh -huh. then I would recommend that he get a, a, a more dedicated webcam. Those have higher resolution, better quality. Uh, but he was just on, on his laptop, just oh, well, open it up. Cool. You want, want to make sure that the camera's at eye level so that you look like we're looking at each other yeah. and not looking down at uh -huh, anyone, uh -huh, yeah. right? Uh, so there's a little tips and tricks. We have a, uh, we have a checkpoint of 30 uh, checks that you want to do with yourself if you're going to come in virtually to make sure that you look and sound amazing. Mm -hmm. And so we, we like to go over that with people. And if, I'd be happy to share that with you or any oh. of your guests. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's great. I think I... I think I might want to write a, an article in NewsHawk about that. People would love to have all those tips. Yeah, and like I said, th th this is, we're just kind of at the baby steps. People are still trying to figure this out. So the more educational information that we can get out there, the better experience all of us are going to have with these yeah. hybrid meetings. Well, that's exciting. And I've loved watching you jump in with both feet and figure it out yes. really quickly. Man. Well, I, I, when COVID first hit, you know, the, everyone was talking about what's your pivot, what's your pivot, yeah, how yeah. are you as a company going to uh -huh. going to do something different to to not wait for things to change, but to to make a change yourself. Yeah. And so we saw right away that everyone was needing to have a virtual experience, and Zoom was the platform. Yeah. And so we were working with the local chambers of commerce to put on daily educational series uh -huh. on how to use Zoom, how to get a camera working, how to get your microphone, how to mute yourself, how to share documents, all these things. But now that most people have kind of figured out how to do those things, now we're in kind of Zoom 2.0, uh -huh. right? How do we make that virtual experience better? And the reason that we got into hybrid events is because we, we kind of pushed beyond what Zoom was be able to do and we needed to go with better quality like the recordings of zooms are kind of fuzzy but people wanted to have hybrid events and be able to reuse the recording of these events yeah. to publish on their website to publish on tv to, mm -hmm. to, to send to people that couldn't <clears throat> attend and the quality of zoom recordings just isn't high enough so that yeah. pushed us more into like tv production software oh, gotcha. and all these ptz cameras and i love it i've lost a few hairs over it <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> well, you can't even tell. Thank you. Oh gosh, that. All right. So, uh, all right. So, tell me. So, I've heard you say hybrid, virtual. There might be another term. So, what's the difference exactly? Yeah. So, there's the difference between a hybrid event and a virtual event. So, I'll I'll give you an example. So, okay. right now we're at TV Santa Barbara. Yes. And we're in their green screen room, and so uh, there's this beautiful virtual stage behind uh -huh. us, but. But to the rest of the guests out in TV land, we're just in a green room, right? <laughs> and so anyone can do this. So we were contacted a couple weeks ago by a very dynamic woman that has a talk show, uh, a, a radio show in North Carolina, and she wanted to, to come virtual. So we gave her an equipment list. Okay, go buy this big green cloth that hangs off these two poles, and it has to be long enough so that you can sit a chair on it so that we can see your feet underneath the green. And then we put her in this big stage that looks like as a maybe a 600 square foot room, but really she's she's in the basement of her house, <laughs> right? And we zoom in from across the room, and there's this background noise coming on and this opening, and she says, "Welcome everyone to the program," right? And then off to the side behind her is a huge picture window that goes from the ceiling to the floor, and she says, "I'd like to welcome our first guest," and guess what? That guest pops in on the oh screen. Oh my gosh! Doesn't have to be there in person. And so she's going to be interviewing all of her guests this way, and she's so excited. So that's a virtual event where she's actually holding kind of a live event in her basement by yeah. herself, yeah. but bringing people into the production. And it'll be spectacular. I'll have to show you the, her after yeah. her first show. She's supposed to shoot her first show in about two weeks. Oh, that's pretty darn exciting. Yes. So, Michael, um, for all the nonprofits watching mm -hmm. and on a different learning curve, perhaps, what message might you have for them in terms of uh, hybrid meetings, hybrid board meetings, hi any kind of a hybrid meeting? I, I like what uh, I like what Steve Jobs said in one of his uh, in one of his TED Talk style introductions of products, and I think it was when when the they came out with the wireless earbuds, you know, Apple always had the white, yeah. right? And they were known for that. And then they came out with these little earbuds that had no wires. Yeah. 
And so someone asked him, said, well, these are going to fall out. People are going to lose them. And why have you done this? Everyone's really upset. Uh, and, and Steve said, when you know what the future is, you, you need to bring it to technology today. You need to start using it today. If you know that's where we're headed, then just make it happen today. And what I would say to, to the nonprofits is hybrid meetings are not going to go away. Hybrid meetings are going to be around. They are less expensive than flying people in, yeah, yeah. having people even travel mm -hmm. through traffic. Uh, the convenience, I can't tell you, everyone is, like even the local chamber of commerce, I'm a, I was on the board of the local chamber, a Glita chamber, and I've been ambassador for years. Mm -hmm. And for all of last year, they said, even though we could meet, it's just so easy to have these meetings virtually, you know? Yeah, right. So I, I don't think it's going to go away. Yeah. And I think if you really want to reach more people, make it more convenient for people to participate on your yeah. boards, then you need to adopt this concept of a hybrid event. And I know that there, uh, I've, I've got friends that just don't like their, I'm gonna say older friends. I'm old myself, I don't look oh, old, but sure. I'm old, I'm old. And, um, but older friends that maybe aren't used to technology and so they're like, oh no, you know, being virtual, this is boring, no one likes it. You have to get beyond these words because the rest of the population is really adopting this. Yeah. And so you, you have to think not what you're thinking, maybe as an older board member that isn't comfortable with the technology, but think about the people that you want to bring into your board. Right. Right. And they are willing to accept that technology and embrace it. Yeah. And maybe it might be the turning key for them to want to be on the board. Yeah. Wow. Michael, you have mm. given us so much to think about. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Senator. Love you. <laughs> Love you. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.